British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams. Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Leyland. I'm here at the British Gas Swimming Championships 2011. Great Britain currently can boast three world champions and they're all in action tonight on day three of the British Gas Swimming Championships. My pick of the five finals has to be the women's 100 meter backstroke. We all love a revenge match, and this race brings together the European champion Gemma Spofforth and Lizzie Simmons, the silver winner. These two faced each other for the crown in Budapest last August, where Spofforth outtouched Simmons by 0.39 of a second. After the semis here in the Aquatic Centre, Spofforth, who's not only a world champion but also a world record holder, goes in the final as fastest qualifier, a scant 600 quicker than Simmons. Teammates on the British squad, but when they lock horns tonight, they will be brimming over with rivalry. The outcome, very difficult to call. World champion and world record holder for the 50 metres backstroke, Liam Tancock, lines up as quickest in the 100 metres final. He's the Commonwealth goal winner in New Delhi over the two lengths. Can he again fill the top spot tonight? He'll have to hold off the challenge from the younger Tyros eager to derail his winning aspirations. Chris Walker-Hebben and Grant Halsall are unfazed by reputations and are likely to be offering the strongest challenge. Two open water specialists are expected to be the top two finishers in the women's 1500 metres. Kerry-Anne Payne two years ago clinched the world open water title in Rome, so tonight's 60 length journey will be a mere dash for her. Her training partner at Stockport ITC, Cassie Patton, beat her to silver at the Olympics in Beijing and this will be their first major clash since then. The remaining two British titles to be decided this evening are the men's 200m freestyle and the women's 100m breaststroke. Looking at the men's four length encounter first, will the trio from the old firm, Robbie Rennick, who's aiming for the freestyle double, David Carey and Ross Davenport, be upstaged by the youngsters who've made the cut, like Ewan Lloyd and Joshua Walsh, who raced a silver and bronze behind Rennick in the 400. The same can be said about the women's 100m breaststroke. British record holder Kate Haywood claims lane four as fastest qualifier, but the rest of the field are close on her heels. Also included in tonight's busy program are two multi-classification contests and three semi-finals, one of which includes a certain Becky Adlington. So the first event of uh, evening number three swings into action, the men's 50 metre multi-classification. And we have four different classifications represented in this final, seven, eight, nine and ten. And remember, it is the nearest to their world record that will win, who amasses the most points. But it's lane four that's looking for the wall to win the uh, 50 metres here. Graham Edmonds wants a performance. Edmonds spots the wall on 25.84 and a good points tally of 746 points. Matthew, that's a great start to tonight's action, really, isn't it? How was it for you? Uh, it was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm a 50 metre specialist, so... Yeah. Uh, it's a good lead now to Berlin. Hopefully, you just keep going, keep going faster, and we don't know what's going to happen, do we? But I'm really looking forward to it, and yeah. the meet's really good. The English record holder comes off the wall with good turn there, and three quarters of a body length advantage for Davenport, coached by Ben Titley. Over there in lane two, holding the rest on the left shoulder as they're heading now to the final 15 in the penultimate 50. Davenport it is, looking good. Igniting the burners, has he ignited them too early? You've got to ask the question. It's all about gaining the higher ground, but has he committed slightly too early? Final 50, Davenport over there in two. And Robbie Rennick, City of Glasgow, coming through. Rennick beginning to come at Davenport now. He's saved the best till last. Beginning to tie up a little bit, Davenport, as Rennick looks as though he's going to overhaul him. 15 to go. Davenport, the English record holder, he's offering stubborn resistance here. Davenport's going to take this into the final five. Davenport takes it on 148.34. Well, congratulations. Great race. Close race as well. Yeah, I always knew that was going to be the case. Uh, fantastic field. Obviously, Robbie won the, the Commonwealth uh, six months ago, so it's... It's always nice to race the, the best and obviously there's a lot of great guys in that, in that field. And the plan was to go and win it and uh, luckily did that, but uh, I probably went out a little bit too quick, I really don't know, but yeah. it's all about coming here and you know, try, trying to win the race and qualify for, for the world later on in the year. 
And on the turn at the completion of the first 50, it is Simmons that turns first on 29.83. So it's a good start here by Lizzie Simmons, who's trying to turn the tables on Spofford, who pipped her to that European title. But now here comes Spofford, the strength beginning to reflect. Gemma Spofforth in the middle, now starting to turn the screw and putting the rest of the sword. Approaching the final five, it's Spofforth now ahead of Simmons. Gemma Spofforth will spot the wall to take the 100 back. She does at time 60.52 to clinch gold. Silver going to Lizzie Simmons of Loughborough University, Loughborough ITC. Her time 61.16. And the bronze going to Rachel Leafley. Gemma, how does it feel qualifying for Shanghai? Oh, it's great. You know, that's the reason I came here, and that's the, just qualifying, getting through to the next round. I got 200 late in the week, so hopefully we can do something there. Now then, the fastest eight from these two semi-finals will line up for a tilt at the medals tomorrow. So they really have got to give it some here. There's no holding anything back. Look out for Jamie Graham in lane four from the city of Glasgow, coached by Graham Wardell. He was fastest in qualification on 29.37, a lifetime best. Looks a bit uh, close to me at the moment. Craig Elliott in five of Cockermouth is going strong, but also lane three as well. Let's have a look. No, it is Elliott of Cockermouth that takes that on 28.98. Now then the mark to beat is 28.98 if you want to line up on the blocks in uh, lane four for the final tomorrow. So, semi-final number two already approaching that red marker, 25 metres wiped away. And it's lane four, looking good. Russell Smith, Stockport Metro, Stockport ITC, qualified through 28.78, just 4.100 shy of his lifetime best. Coming up to the concluding uh, five, and it is uh, lane four, Russell Smith that's going to dab the wall first. He does on 28.74. The Commonwealth is out of reach, but the British record certainly is not. 15.03.52. And look at the contest for silver and bronze. Eleanor Faulkner in lane six is once again trying to come back at Cassandra Patton. Looking for the turn and the final 50 for Kerry Ann Payne, who swims for Stockport Metro and Stockport ITC. That British record held by Rebecca Cook. It's been there on the book since 2003. The mark to beat is 16.40.70. Come on, let's hear it for her. And mom is cheering her on away to my left. There's less than 25 metres to go. The British mark, 16.40.70. Keep an eye on the clock. Here she comes. Final five for Kerry Ann Payne. Stops the clock. What a swim. 16.06.67. A British record. Let's hear it. And what's Liam Tancock going to do here in the middle in lane four? He's the holder of the British and Commonwealth record at 52.73. And that trademark start of Tancock already reflecting here with nearly a body length advantage over the rest. Let's not forget he is the world record holder for the 50 metres. So Tancock storming down the pool into the final five of the opening 50. Looking for the wall. Let's have a look at the split time here. Tancock split time 25.87. He's off a second off the pace of the British Commonwealth record, but he's got the head of the race comfortably in his grasp here. Contest behind for silver and bronze is equally as exciting. Chris Walker Heaven in five in silver. Ryan Bennett in six, holding on to bronze. But it's Tanko who's gone well clear of the rest of the field. Coming up to the touch here. Tankoff's going to take the gold medal. He does. Tankoff wins 53.44. Are you happy with that result? Yeah, definitely for, for March. Um, it's all improvements carry on, and um, you know I'm really pleased with performance. I was going through the rounds and uh, just trying to get a quicker each time, and you know to come away with a decent time and uh, world championship place is perfect. We're in for a storming second 100. Remember, the fastest eight will go through to tomorrow's final. Field, uh, most of them in touch here as they make their way down to the uh, turn to line themselves up for the run back to complete this first 200 semi. Miley over first. Carling, in fact, over first. And Miley second, third, Adlington, Nova Centurion. 
who posted that sensational time, 4.02 for the 400 to seal the gold medal on day one. But here comes the concluding stages. Hey. Calling going strongly here in lane three and Adlington starting to come through to challenge Carlin. Does she want to win the semi? It was close, wasn't it? Yep, she does. Rebecca Adlington wins semi-final number one on 159.88. Very close indeed. She's two one hundreds up on Sasha Matthews from Nova Centurion in lane six. Now then, remember the cutoff times here. 159.88, Adlington. 100th quicker than Carling in the first. 20.0151 by Miley third. And Payne fourth on 20.093. Top eight times through to tomorrow's final. Jackson still leading. Joanne Jackson, who came away from the Olympics in Beijing with a bronze medal for the 400, and then added a silver in the same event at the World Championships. But it looks very much like Rebecca Turner in lane four, City of Sheffield, is going to take this. Although Jackson's coming back just like Adlington did in semi-final number one. A little bit of pride at stake there. So Jackson goes inside that two-minute marker, going on 159.96. Good turning technique then by Roebuck, coached by Ian Arminger. Heading up to the turn in the final 50 for semi-final number one of this men's 200-meter butterfly. Roebuck it is then. He's showing the rest the way home here. Second is Pavoni. And third was Louis Smith in lane three. And that's how it'll finish, I reckon, as they're coming through into the final 15. Smith in lane three, trying to close down on Pavoni, but nobody's going to catch Roebuck. Roebuck takes semi-final number one, 158.74. But he really is going well, motoring down the pool, ahead here of uh, Ian McMillan of Edinburgh University and Cameron Brodie of Kelly College. They were the top three at the turn at the midway point. Here comes Rock then with 50 to go, 125.01. Still McMillan second and Brody still lying third. So no change in the positions as they now progress down the final 50. It's all about trying to get into that final, isn't it? With not expending too much energy. Now then, is Michael Rock, the British record holder, going to take lane four for tomorrow's final? Let's have a look. Finishing time for Rock, 156.26. The answer to that question is yes. Michael Rock will start in lane four tomorrow as the quickest qualifier. Keep an eye on Kerry Bucket in lane five as well from Edinburgh University. But Haywood's had the good start with that traditional high bobbing style of hers right in the middle of the pool in lane four. Lane eight's also looking good. Lowry Tynan, Lupre University. Tynan is the Welsh record holder on 68.30. Midway point, it's Haywood turning first on 32.55. Only 11 hundredths ahead of Lowry Tynan, the Welsh record holder. Now then, who's going to cover themselves in glory here? Which way is the pendulum going to swing? We're into the final 25. Haywood in the middle. Also coming through is Stacey Tad in lane three. Tad of the University of Bath is really looking good. Well, she's not afraid of reputations. And I tell you what, Tad in lane three is going to take it. Tad in lane three takes it. What a swim, 69.97. Uh, you came back really, really strong there, right in the last minute. Are you pleased with that? I'm uh, really pleased. I uh, couldn't see anyone, so I just had to keep going <laughs> right to the wall. And uh, I was surprised that I touched first. So you didn't realise that you were actually in front at that last moment? No, because I tilt my head the other way, you see. So oh. that, so coming back down the pool, I couldn't really see anyone. So what about the rest of the week? What's your focus then? Yeah, I've got the 200 breaststroke on Wednesday, so hopefully everything could go OK for that one. British Gas, proud sponsors of the British swimming teams.